Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here. In today's video, I'm going to show you the best PSP emulator on Android. Let's get started. Now for reference, I will be using a Samsung Galaxy Note 9. I've also used an S4, an S5, and an S7 with varying degrees of success. The reality of it is that some games are hit and some games are missed. The more powerful the phone you have, the easier time you'll have emulating games. There are a total of three apps that I would recommend, maybe two and a half, and you'll see why in just a second. If this is your first time emulating PSP on Android, head over to the Google Play Store and check out PPSSPP. This app is 100% free and there are no ads. It's an amazing app and definitely a great place to get started. I recommend PPSSPP to almost everybody. Now the second app that I would recommend is PPSSPP Gold. The difference between the previous app PPSSPP and this version, the Gold version, is nothing. They are the exact same app. All the menus, all the features, all the options are the exact same. Now, the only real differences between the gold and the standard version are one, the icon color. So you can see this is gold where the standard one is like a bluey green. And the fact that this one is paid. So it is paid, but the money just goes to support the developer. It doesn't unlock anything extra. It doesn't give you anything extra. I have both the gold and regular versions and there is no difference between the two. I've tested both of them out and they both perform the exact same. I picked up the gold version just to support the developer. Now, if you're very experienced experienced with emulation and PSP emulation, you can always pick up RetroArch. So PPSSPP is an available core in RetroArch that you can use and it works very well. For me personally, I use both, but I do generally find myself booting up the PPSSPP app. Once you have the app up and running, you'll be greeted with this screen here. It shows a list of your recent games. There are other menus. Now, if this is your first time opening PPSSPP, you will want to go into the games menu in order to locate your games. And if you don't have any games, you can always head into Homebrew and Demos because there are free games available. You just click on the link that says download from the PPSSPP Homebrew Store. Now once you're in the Homebrew menu, all you have to do is click on a game and it will let you know a little bit about the game. There's also an option to install. There's great games in here. For example, Cave Story, which is an incredible game. It's only 1.77 megs. So all you have to do is click Cave Story, then click install. It'll download download and install automatically. Once the game is downloaded and installed, which really doesn't take that long, you just have to click launch game. The game boots right up and you're pretty much good to go. Now this is a great option if you don't already own PSP ROMs. Generally all of the games on the homebrew store work with PPSSPP. One area I recommend checking out is the settings menu. There are a lot of different settings on there for a lot of customization. One thing I have noticed with the settings is that sometimes they vary on a game to game basis. You will notice you may have to change settings based on the game you're playing. These are my general settings. I do tweak them slightly, but I will show you my general setup. For the back end, I use OpenGL. Now you can choose OpenGL or you can choose Vulkan, and I will say this will vary on a phone to phone basis and on a game to game basis. I also recommend turning on auto frame skipping for the smoothest gameplay possible. Frame skipping type is percent of FPS or you can switch it to number of frames. Now for display resolution and rendering resolution. This will vary based on the game that you're playing and on the phone that you have. Each game generally performs slightly different. For me, I generally have it set to three times the PSP rendering and display resolutions. If you want better graphics, you can always crank this up to four or five times. If your phone is struggling, then turn this down to two or one times PSP. This setting here will be one of the biggest factors in determining whether or not your game is going to run smoothly. The higher the setting, the more demanding it is on your phone. There are other options in here you can tinker around with, and I would recommend tinkering around and just trying some different options. Really when it comes down to it, if you screw something up, you can always reset it. So definitely do one or two options at a time if you are having issues and seeing what works best for you, seeing what you prefer the most. In the audio menu, there aren't a lot of options here, but there is one that is important and that's audio latency. 
You can choose whatever audio latency you would like. I generally just have it set at medium. One of my favorite menus is the controls menu because there's a lot to do here. You can turn on and off your touchscreen controls. For example, if you have a Bluetooth controller, you don't need those touchscreen controls on so you can turn them off and you don't see them. On top of that, there are a ton of configurable buttons. So if you want buttons to do a certain thing, you can do that. On top of that, if you want to edit the touchscreen controls, you can. You can move around buttons. You can change the size of the buttons. You can pretty much customize everything you want here. So if something's not the way you want it, you can change it so it's perfect for you. Now moving into the systems menu, there really isn't a lot here that you need to change. If you are an expert with emulators, you can tinker around in here. Don't be afraid because if you screw something up, there's an option in here. Restore PPSSPP settings to default. You can click on that if you've changed any of the settings in PPSSPP and games no longer play well. Just click that button and you're good to go. On top of that, you can change your PSP model as well as your nickname. Now here's Street Fighter Alpha 3 running on stock PSP settings. So this is how it looks if you're running at one times resolution. So it tries to match the resolution of the original PSP. Now for this game, I'm going to crank the resolution up to five times PSP and see how it runs. So here's what the game looks like with cranked up graphics. This is five times the PSP resolution. Looking at everything, it looks a lot better than the native PSP resolution. On top of that, I'm getting full speed so you can see 60 of 60 so I'm running at 60 frames per second which is a hundred percent game speed this is before and this is after this is Need for Speed Underground Rivals running at the native PSP resolution so this is one times PSP looking at this as well it's running at 30 frames a second which for this game is a hundred percent game speed this is the same game running at five times the native PSP resolution. It looks a heck of a lot better. The game is still running at full speed here at 30 frames a second, and in my opinion, is definitely worth tinkering around with. Tinker around with the settings for the display resolution because you never know. You can get a game like this running very well, looking great. Other games, you may have to scale it back just a little bit. So now we'll test out God of War Ghost of Sparta. One thing I would recommend is definitely turning on auto frame skipping for this game, but looking at it, currently I'm rendering it at three times PSP graphics. So running the game right now, it looks pretty good, but at the same time, it's also dropping some frames. So I can see if I look at the frame rate, when there's a lot of people on the screen, when there's a lot of activity here, there are frames dropping, so the game slows down just a little bit. But anyways, that's all I've got for today. I would recommend trying out PPSSPP, whether it's the standalone app or within RetroArch, because it's absolutely free. On top of that, there is a homebrew menu if you don't have ROMs of your own. Your experience with PPSSPP will vary based on the type of phone you have and based on the type of game you're playing. Each game will probably require a bit of tinkering with the settings in order to get running smoothly, and it's something that's going to be a trial and error. So just be patient with it, and don't worry if anything goes wrong, just reset your settings and you should be good to go. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button, check out my other videos. Thank you everyone. Take care.